It's often easy to achieve initial success, but to be consistent, to retain that success, that is a great art form. For Ottmar Hitzfeld, winning comes with the responsibility to win again and again. As a result, his career has been driven by one of the most basic principles, that football was, is, and will always be a team game. Otmar Hitzfeld always told us to concentrate on the team. If the players function as a team, only then can we achieve success. We accepted everything he said and we believed every word he said. That was the basis for the success we had. He won the Champions League with two clubs. He won a lot of titles in Germany and Switzerland. The Dortmund fans adored him for what, for what he'd done for them. And then he also went on to buy him and done the exact same with them. For me, Otmar Hitzfeld is on the same level as Sir Alex Ferguson and Jose Mourinho. Mourinho. He has won more than 30 domestic, European and individual awards. And behind the success lies a simple philosophy. You can't be satisfied just because you've achieved something. Satisfaction is the biggest enemy of an athlete. There are many ways to achieve success. Many of the greatest managers employ mind games along with a tactical master plan. Intimidation was never the Ottmar Hitzfeld way. In all my time, I never saw him lose his temper, really. The way he made his mark, it was in a calm and determined way. He was always to the point in the things that he said, and you always had to abide by what he said. He respected the players, and so we respected the manager. I always say as you become older, you should also become calmer, and you have to try and go about things in the right way. Ottmar Hitzfeld was born in Lodak, Baden, in 1949. The German was a striker whose biggest success came in Switzerland, with league titles and one cup at FC Basel. After retiring at 34, he sought a life away from football, but fate intervened. I wanted to become a teacher and was told I had the necessary qualifications. But since I had not taught for 12 years, I had to take another exam. I was very annoyed and disappointed at this. I said, I will not take another exam. I will try to be a successful manager first. And I gave myself a time span of five years. In Switzerland, Hitzfeld guided lower league club SC Zug to promotion. Then he took provincial club FC Arrow to cup success and second in the Swiss First Division in 1985. But the young manager was aiming higher. How do you attract attention? By taking big risks in the way you play. We played with an aggressive, pressing style, which was quite revolutionary for those days. But I wanted to attract people's attention. And if you are with a smaller club, you have to play with bigger risks in order to be successful. The strategy worked. Four successful years at Arrow led the German to Swiss giants Grasshopper Zurich. Hitzfeld had arrived. The responsibility for me was just much greater. The club has to be successful. The club has to play in Europe. It's my responsibility to lead the club into the European Cup. But you can't just play all-out attack or just drive forward, putting on a show, because those fans you are trying to please are then the first ones who will be baying for your blood if it doesn't work. Five trophies in three years, including consecutive league titles, proved that Hitzfeld could handle the pressure. It was time to step up once again. He returned to his home country, taking over Borussia Dortmund, where he met the coach who would become his right-hand man for the next 20 years. I noticed immediately that we had the same ideas on the game, a similar philosophy of football. 
When I joined Dortmund in 1991, the club was fighting to avoid relegation. They were at the bottom of the table, and the team was very insecure. They weren't playing well at home. They were almost afraid to play at home. My main task was to instill confidence and assertiveness back into the team, to make them a force at home once again, and to give them the ability to dominate every opponent. Hitzfeld's impact was immediate. In his first season, he took the club to within minutes of winning what would have been only a fourth Bundesliga title. In one of the tightest championship races for years, an 88th minute strike from Guido Buchwald handed the title to Stuttgart on goal difference. Hitzfeld remained philosophical. If you accomplish it, you deserve it. If you don't succeed and three minutes are missing, then you weren't lucky enough, or you had made mistakes, or the opponent was simply better. You just have to accept that. It's true that it was painful to think that we lost the championship in the last few minutes of the season. We have to accept that someone else won, but in general it was a super season. It was good that we came second. That way we still had goals to achieve. You have to develop and grow to win the title. The following season saw Dortmund reach the UEFA Cup final. They were beaten 6-1 on aggregate by Juventus, but the manager was making progress. That time the Dortmund dressing room was full of massive stars that had won the World Cup and Serie A and Bundesliga titles and big, big players at that time. Riedler, Schapizat, Paolo Sosa, Jürgen Koller, Matthias Sammer, Andreas Muller. And how he handled them and how he got the best out of them I thought was a, was a, great, a great strength of his. When we thought we were doing badly and we'd expect him to shout at us, he instead tried to console us and made us believe in ourselves. But when we thought we were playing well and being overconfident, that's when he could be tough. In all my time, I never saw him lose his temper, really. Thankfully, we, we won more games than not with that, that team that I played with, so I think everybody had the greatest respect for them. In the 94-95 season, it all came together. On the final day of the campaign, goals from Andreas Muller and Lars Ricken sealed the league for Dortmund, their first title since 1963. It was a beautiful season. For three or four seasons it was beautiful because we were superior to most of the teams. In Dortmund, football is religion. And Dortmund has hundreds of thousands or millions of fans. And it was a fantastic experience. There were a million people lining the streets. We drove through the city on the bus for four or five hours. It had been 32 years since the club won a title. There was a big celebration. Everybody was happy. A wonderful experience. It was just crazy in Dortmund at that time. We were a small club, but growing constantly. I think Otmar Hitzfeld brought a disciplined structure to the club, so that from that point on, one success followed another. A second consecutive title followed 12 months later, earning Dortmund's re-entry to the Champions League. French side Auxerre were beaten in the quarter-finals. Before Manchester United were defeated in the semi-finals. A first ever Champions League final beckoned for Hitzfeld. Standing in his way, Italian giants Juventus. We knew we would need to be patient and that there would be very few chances. Mental strength and belief is very important in a game like that, as well as the defensive organization of our team. In that respect, we gave Juventus very little room. 
We had the advantage that we were considered outsiders. All the pressure was on Juventus. Nobody thought we could win. That day we played the perfect match in Munich. Hitzfeld's planning paid off. Two goals from Karl-Heinz Riedler and one from Lars Ricken saw Dortmund run out 3-1 winners. For the first time ever, they were champions of Europe. The day of the game, I thought, I thought Dortmund were excellent. I don't think many people gave them a chance, but I just thought with the players that they had, we had a terrific chance to, to win it. We were up against a top, top, top event inside at that time. When you look back at a Champions League final, those are great days. It is a feast of football, and there is a lot of suspense, so you have to really concentrate. You know you can make history that day. You only have such a chance once, maybe two or three times, if you're lucky, to live such an experience. I think it was the greatest achievement of his career as a coach. The way we played and the, and the goals that we scored, I thought, I thought we were lovely winners. When the referee blew the whistle, I was just so happy. There was lots of hugging, there was lots of jubilation with my assistants. We had made a little miracle happen as Borussia Dortmund was still a relatively small club. Juventus was a very popular club which had celebrated a great deal of international success. Therefore, we had managed to make something sensational happen. It was fantastic. But Hitzfeld had taken Dortmund as far as he could. Five trophies, including that historic Champions League win, had transformed the club into a major force. Despite the success, there was a bigger step to take. Borussia Dortmund had become a big club in Germany. But internationally, Bayern Munich were a notch above. Bayern were a club where you have to succeed all the time. And so it was a great challenge for both of us. I had the advantage when I came to Bayern. I'd already won the league title twice. I'd won the Champions League as a coach and therefore I had an advantage over the players. Most of the time when a new coach comes to Bayern Munich, the players have more titles than the new coach. Managing Germany's biggest club, however, presented its own special challenges. Bayern Munich is a huge club with popular names on the board of directors. Names such as Beckenbauer, Rummenigge, Hoeneß. There are some powerful figures at the top. When I was a player and I had uh, strong coaches, quiet. There was no trouble, no problem, nothing. You have only concentration for the game. And in the past we had uh, coaches that are not strong enough to handle a team like uh, Bayern Munich. You have 25 players in your squad, and of those 25 players, 24 will be internationals. And to deal with all these players at once, and to ensure that no individual player feels left out and stays behind, that's not so easy. The media cover Bayern every day. There are 20 or 30 journalists at every training session. So that is another element, which means you really have to prepare mentally for that club. You have to be extraordinary class play, uh, uh, coach, to, to handle a, a team like this. That's, uh, and Ottmar Hitzfeld, he's the one. We looked for him uh, after I don't know how many years. And finally, and uh, we are very, very happy and very lucky to have him. Bayern's entire squad were household names, but Hitzfeld's approach didn't change. He had a huge job at Bayern because he had to deal with 20 internationals at once. But through his calm and determined style, he managed to do that. He managed the situation incredibly well. Every player that was on the bench or in the stands was never angry. Instead, we were one team and we can thank the manager for that. He would of course be critical about things, but always in a tone that was acceptable. He hardly ever shouted, hardly ever. Also, we would come to the dressing room at half-time and you would be left alone for five minutes so that everyone could think about themselves and think about the game. I think it's always important to show the players the right kind of respect and to also demand the right kind of respect as well. The relationship between us has to be right. 
You try to develop trust, and if you do that, trust is paid back with effort. Hitzfeld's investment in trust worked immediately. In 1999, Bayern won the Bundesliga by 15 points, and the manager also guided the club to the Champions League final. Their opponents in Barcelona were Manchester United. It turned out to be one of the most incredible nights in European football history. I can't describe how I felt. I don't think you can describe it. Or relive what happened that night. <laughs> yes, it was a crazy game in 1999. Bayern took the lead after only six minutes through Mario Basler. They went on to dominate the match. We were the better team for 90 minutes. We had great chances. We hit the post and the bar, and we could have decided the game early on. But Bayern paid the price for those missed opportunities. Manchester United equalised in the first minute of injury time. And with 94 minutes on the clock, the English side scored the winner. The most astonishing end to a European final. Three minutes earlier, we were the clear winner, the Champions League winner, and we had already started to celebrate in our minds. But three minutes later, we had nothing. From the top, we came crashing down to the bottom. To witness Manchester United celebrating, how the players were holding up the cup. I congratulated Alex Ferguson, but I was so disappointed and broken-hearted. The team was on the floor. We were ruined. But I believe even at that moment, we saw the qualities of Otmar Hitzfeld. He remained calm and objective and managed to pull the team together. He'd won the Champions League with Dortmund and he could have won the Champions League with the second team. And he did really win it after 90 minutes, but he couldn't hold the cup in his hands. Such a result may have ruined lesser men, not Hitzfeld. After the Manchester United loss, I had one of my longest team meetings with the team. I made it clear to the team that we weren't just unlucky, but that we also made mistakes. We could or should have won the final, but we made mistakes. So I told them, we need to learn to cut out the errors, then we can win the Champions League in the future. After winning the league again in 2000, Bayern had the chance to capture an incredible hat-trick of Bundesliga titles in 2001. On the final day of the season against Hamburg, they needed a point to be crowned champions. But in the 90th minute, Hamburg took the lead. It was comparable to the Manchester United game, where everyone broke down and thought, what has happened now? What have we done? Now we've lost the championship again in the 90th minute. We thought we lost the championship. And then what happened in the 94th minute was indescribable. In the fourth minute of injury time, Hamburg defender Thomas Uschwalusi's tackle was ruled a back pass. Free kick to Bayern in the Hamburg penalty area. All this scuffle in front of the Hamburg goal, and Oliver Kahn was up there with us again, and we asked ourselves, what is he doing up here again? But that's what he was like, Oli. He just caused confusion up there. Then the equaliser in the 94th minute, and then the final whistle, and we were German champions. It was incredible. Four days later, Bayern had the chance to exorcise the memories of 1999. They faced Valencia in the Champions League final in Milan. The Spaniards took an early lead through a Mendieta penalty. Before Bayern equalised with a Stefan Effenberg spot kick. And with no more goals, the match went to a penalty shootout. We were strong mentally, and we knew we had to remain so until the very last second. We had to believe that we could win a Champions League final. We had learned from our mistakes two years earlier, 
1999 against Manchester United. We didn't have that concentration in the last two or three minutes, but against Valencia, we were convinced that we could compete until the final penalty. No one was more convinced than goalkeeper Oliver Kahn. He saved three penalties as Bayern Munich won the Champions League for the first time in 25 years. And after Ernst Happel, Hitzfeld became only the second manager to win the European Cup with two different clubs. And for me, it was very important to win the Champions League with Bayern Munich. It wasn't important for me to win with two different clubs, but to win it with Bayern. They are the ones who paid my salary, so we needed to make the club successful again. And not only as German title holders and German cup holders, but also to win the Champions League. That is why I was happier than anyone when we achieved that goal with Bayern Munich. Hitzfeld stayed with Bayern Munich until 2004. He'd won 11 trophies in only six years. But now he needed to escape. Six years with Bayern Munich are like 20 years anywhere else. I was tired, I felt burnt out, and I didn't want to coach anymore. I returned to Switzerland and withdrew a bit. I made no TV appearances, no presentations, no talks. I did nothing other than trying to recover. It was a difficult time for me. I was a bit depressed. I wasn't enjoying life during that period, even though I had achieved a great deal. It was difficult and it took me two years to recover. He returned to the club in February 2007, and that summer, Bayern embarked on a major spending spree, bringing in stars like Franck Ribéry and Luca Toni. Success was expected. Hitzfeld duly delivered. It was fantastic when I returned to Bayern Munich. All of a sudden, I was able to look forward to it again. And the last year and a half, 2007 and 2008, they were the best years for me there. Because I had recovered. I had the strength. I was enjoying life. And because I could really enjoy it again when we won a game. Hitzfeld won more than a game. A domestic league and cup double was secured, but the lure of international management proved too strong. He returned to Switzerland, securing them qualification for the 2010 World Cup, where his team recorded a famous victory over eventual winners Spain. Yes, I was very happy that Switzerland was able to qualify for the World Cup. Such a qualification with a small country like Switzerland counts the same for me as winning a title in the Bundesliga. And the victory against Spain, the eventual champions, that was a historical win. It's a great World Cup memory to have. Five clubs and more than 20 trophies. Ernst Happel and Jose Mourinho are the only other men to have won the European Cup with two different teams. Odmar Hitzfeld has been voted Bayern Munich's greatest ever manager and the Bundesliga coach of all time. He is definitely one of the best managers ever, and I'm very happy I was able to play under him. Otmar Hitzfeld was always a gentleman. He was accountable for the players. He never flew off the handle. He was always objective and analytical. He talked to the players, and the players listened. They quickly understood that they could rely upon what he was saying to them. Of course, there were some difficult situations, but he said quite clearly, it won't work that way. You can try, but you'll see I'm right. I think he is simply one of the greatest coaches in the world. I always say as you become older, you should also become calmer. You have to try and go about things in the right way. You should not get too excited, but equally, you must not get too down about things. You must treat each situation individually. And overall, I find my experience as a coach is very important for my quality of life.